it's not there's not much left in the old vocabulary bank here we are it's um the martin fallis grom with brent and sam here we go um yeah let me let me start with me and so yes it's been a busy morning i've actually had the adventures trustee meeting meeting um so i've stood down as chair and brian has taken over and we're sorting out all of our stuff there um also had the local support meeting which went well and showed uh, location counts to the client and she likes it and that's lovely and uh, plenty to talk about there. Um, in the background, I have been doing things on the website one and I have merged the new Rubified Agile bot in and I'm wending it, getting it, trying to get it onto staging so that it can um, take over and manage our uh, Slack communications. And uh, at the same time, I'm trying to put the same sort of reruns of Cucumber that we have on local support onto website one. So we kind of, hopefully there'll be less time spent mucking around with pull requests having to be rebuilt and we will see. Um, but that segues into other things that happen today. We've got the website one planning meeting coming up later on today. We've got the AV community meeting later in the evening and uh, we've got the React mob uh, starting in about an hour. Um, yes, yeah, so lots going on. Uh, not blocked unless I discover that this cucumber rerun thing has not worked in the way that i wanted it to but that's that's always a possibility um brent how are things going with you um yep good not a lot to report actually i've not managed to do much since we spoke yesterday mm. um the intention is to finish the embedded map by the time we talk monday right um so i'm hopeful on that um and maybe if we've got time after the scrum today just to look at the um the other um, task, which was to add the, oh gosh, the, the calendar pop up. Right. Because um, yeah. you, you mentioned that we we were using a gem on website one. So just for consistency, it would be good to know which one you was yeah. using. Um, so it'd be good to go over that if we've got time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think unless there's any other business, I think we probably will. Um, yes. Well, that, that's, the, that's the scrum. Um, on the location counts thing, the uh, I'll just mention that the the client um, see, seeing that, like actually in the meeting, the bit that I recorded, I forgot the name of the site and had to look it up afterwards. But I showed it to her afterwards, and she very much liked the look of the site and very grateful for um, you know the uh, offered um, advertising uh, publicity, which would be super cool. Um, the bing bong bing bong bing. So yeah, and she was looking around. Oh yes, and and she she's always been very inspired by these sites that mash up these things. And just out of interest, you wrote this in PHP or or something similar? Um, PHP mainly, and yeah. there's there's um, C sharp does all the processing. So we we pull all the data in from different sources. Right. We, we process it in offline um, using C sharp, and then oh, okay. that generates the ranks and things, and then right, right, right. Yeah, we present that using PHP and JavaScript. Yeah, cool beans. Yeah, what what we were saying is that would it be interesting to have like the volunteer opportunities down here? Yeah, we could do that. So that's like because we're kind of like aggregating volunteer opportunities for, or, uh, I guess right. But you you would want to be doing it for the whole. Anyway, anyway, so so discussions around that were were positive. Um, yes, so I ended up not showing the the iframe because. I guess we were. I was. I'd sort of been tempted to um, just merge it in, but then I thought, oh, you know, you've got your kind of nice pull request with your set of other things that you want to do. So I kind of held off on on that. Um, yeah, the it, it, it just it's almost like I'm kind of like oh 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 oh. It's like it's so looking like it's working. I'm just really interested to check you know, if it works when we deploy it to Heroku, which it probably should, but you know yeah. what I mean? There's always that last yeah. question mark about about this, that, and the other. But I guess there's no rush. So, yeah, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave that, you know, and a month, when, you, when you're ready, we can merge that in. I guess that's the... That's yeah, the well, I, I don't think there's going to be any blockers, so I can hopefully get that done <clears throat> over the next couple of days. Um, so, yeah, early next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that sounds... That sounds 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 fine. Yes, there's um, plenty to do. So, oh yeah. So you you had the specific question about the calendar pop up. Um, yeah. Uh, so, which yeah, I don't remember if it's a gem or what it is, but probably I can quickly go and have a look in the gem file. 
Uh, yeah, because I, I mean, I if I'd know how to do it just using a jQuery widget, which would be fine. But I yeah. think if there's a way we've done it elsewhere for consistency, then yeah, no, well, and it might it might just be a jQuery widget on on here. I sort of I think I, the reason I said gem is because the the stuff there's another feature I just did on website one, which is about having dynamic forms, and it was a gem that had some JavaScript in it, and blah, 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 blah. but so uh, yeah, I didn't actually sort of look. Um, so I'm just on another window here, looking at all the different calendar stuff. Uh, locale calendar JS. Yeah, I guess I don't actually know how it's done. I can just go and look at this particular file. Hmm. Hmm. Would somehow, I guess maybe we we'll have to go and look at. I did have. Because I think you said it was website one. Oh, it definitely was. It definitely was at one. Yeah. And so, because if we go here and events new, so I, I know there was um, that was the local support code base that you were seeing in the screen share. That was in the other window. I have um, the website one code base on a slightly bigger monitor. But yeah, so this is the exact thing. And I guess if I go and inspect this, it might give me a clue as to where this is. So I mean, we've got here. It's date. It's a date picker. Okay. Um, it may just be JavaScript. Uh, let's go. I'm searching the code base for finding path date picker. Date picker. Uh, it, yeah, we seem to have a bootstrap date picker that we are using. Yeah, cool. Uh, so that that may even be something you're familiar with already. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I'll I'll look at website one and I'll just get some ideas from there. But yeah, that's fine. I don't think there'll be too much issue. Yeah, no, I, I'm just looking at where we where we have it. We have, what did I work out which file it's in? Bootstrap. No, uh, okay. Yeah, it looks like we've got uh, um, we've got a there. There are node modules in website one. Uh, right. Yes, I see Bootstrap Date Picker um, and Bootstrap Time Picker, both as node modules in website one. And I, I guess the, the, the just the other thing is to grab the. No, this is really like the. I should be able to see if I go to events, the form. Um, where do we have that control? Yeah, we've got form, format date picker. Just jumping around in there. Can't bring this over here so you can see it actually. Sorry, it's a bit silly. Over there, close all of these. So that was actually me just, I was jumping through. Come on. But this is the, I think, form group event there. We've got start yeah. date label text field. And so I've never, I haven't actually particularly looked at this before. And so I'm just sort of interested myself in seeing how it works. I assume that's the right, yeah, because we've got there, uh, yeah, fun. And then we've got these helpers here. They, they don't actually seem to be the picker. I, I'm, it's not clear to me how the date picker gets associated with that thing on the down. I guess it might be that we have events. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, document, make ready, events add to calendar. And I'm not sure. No, not to worry. I can, I can yeah. dig yeah. through it and have a look. Yeah, but what I'll do in the background is I'll pull out uh, a link to that code just so it goes into the ticket. Well, I was going to say just uh, on the note of the uh, local support and the those things. The what we're looking at the priorities and things with the client today is what we basically have most of this now almost all of these features are related to this this uh, events epic shall we shall we say um and um yeah the cat calendar pop, pop up that's a, that's a nice easy um thing to pick off i just if you've got a moment can i tell you about a bigger picture thing that we have with this project or yeah now i've got time yeah that's oh, fine. great um yeah so the the bigger picture thing um that we were discussing today with the clients is if we go back to the beginning, when we originally created this site, the, the client's vision for it was that it was a directory of 
all of the different organizations, some of them too small to be normally found. Um, and so it used to be that the home page was this organizations page. And so we've got all the different organizations. And the idea was to try and make it somewhere that it was really easy for all of the local small organizations to update and keep their details up to date. I think reflecting the fact that so the client, they're an umbrella organization for our area that tries to support all of the organizations. And kind of one of their pain points is just trying to keep their details updated. Do you know what I mean? So they, they yeah. wanted to kind of like enable others to be able to maintain the data on where they were and what they were doing. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so I think that then ran up against the issue that basically everybody's really busy and has no time and are, you know, like going to a, you know, going to like the one or two websites that they have to go to, so like if you're running a charity, you must update with the charity commission or what have you. Um, then you're kind of, it's like, it's, it's unlikely that people will go to some other site that they don't have a particular reason to go to just to update their information. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we've kind of seen. And so the site sort of pivoted to say, well, people want volunteers. So, you know, and I mean, it, it's all about, you know, trying to support all of the, you know, worthy causes in the, in the local area. So the focus has now become about uh, volunteering, but we would still like to be kind of keeping this information up to date as a, as a resource. And the way we seeded this was by taking a dump from the Charity Commission and their data about where charities are. Are, are you familiar with the Charity Commission and their data I'm, at all? Um, no, I'm not. No. No. Um, so the, I, I wasn't until we, we did this. I was just in the background. I've got this link to the code for um, for this code. Uh, we are using node modules. Uh, the um, so the charity commission, um, they, well, they they have like their own thing that you can search as a data source, um, and sort of download. They don't provide an API. Actually, at the time when we first started, they didn't even provide the data download. They now have. Like basically, there's a monthly dump from, I guess, their IAS database of the entire uh, England and Wales charity register. Okay. Yeah. Um, now there was there was a there was a open charities group that had um, processed earlier versions of that, um, and um, it still exists. Um, this seems to I think they've written a Rails app. That it still seems to be updating. It's kind of it hasn't really moved on. You can search the charities. They provide a version of the data dump that has the email removed. And uh, we very originally, like four years ago, took their thing, pulled out the you know stuff from the uh, Harrow area, and then stuck it in the database. And that became, and, and combined with the stuff in the spreadsheets from Voluntary Action Harrow, that became the initial set of organizations in, in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but so the problem is, is that basically we haven't maintained any kind of live feed um to you know with them these guys do have an api but it's not immediately clear quite how up to date or what have you um so we've got a kind of a, a, an item in the background is what we would like to be doing and if i lost now, yeah is we would like in the ideal world the charity commission would have an api right so that we could just you know, ping them daily or monthly or what have you, and make sure that our data, you know, corresponded to that. Um, there's another group which is actually like a commercial group. They're called Fine. I think they're called FindLink. Is that right? Oh no, it's called KindLink. That was their name. Um, they're actually taking that data dump, and they're um, like they've built a whole system around it, but it's kind of it's closed. Uh, they're a yeah. for-profit organization. We sort of talked to them about creating an API, but um, they were saying like, okay, yeah, like you do all the work and we don't it. And I was kind of like, mm, not sure about that. So would it yeah. be, a, would it be a wise move for us to build us an API and, well, uh, and then download, you know, you can automate download in the files and right. load in it once a month. Yes. So that, that, that's, that would, we, we've had that as kind of like a, that's, exactly. Um, and we've got somewhere a task and I've, I've put like, Commissioner, I should probably find it. Um, let's have a look here. Yeah, of like automating 
updating org data from Charity Commission. Um, yeah, and so there, there are actually some Python scripts that unpack this data. Um, I, like, there's, a, there's another group that's got, like, um, so in principle, it's all automatable. Um, yeah. And, you know, w we would be sort of interested in it for, um, you know, the local support, um, our community network purposes. But actually, if it wasn't too strenuous, like if we could just like, I mean, really, I think it's a service that the government should be providing. Um, but if like, I, I also take, I take issue with the fact that now there's a for-profit company that's kind of this data, which is should be freely available to the, um, you know, for use in a sort of open data format. Um, so yeah, if we were able to sort of set up a pipeline such that that was all available, that would be, you know, really cool. And it's the kind of thing also then that could be appearing here. You could have yep. all of the local charities for the local area, open data, you know, benefit of the, the nation. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just particularly as I as I realized, you know, the extent of your awesome location counts thing, it made me think, ah, Brent's got an understanding of all the data flows and the bits and pieces that this is the kind of thing that you might be interested in in the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I could I could write it now in PHP, but yeah, not Rails. <laughs> uh, well, and indeed, <laughs> you know, one of the things is. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in, like, uh, uh, I think ultimately with that, there's there's the scope of this, depending on how we do it, it could be a different service. And then, like I said, there's these existing Python scripts for this, that, and the other. So anyway, maybe it's something that we can vote on in next week's local support meeting or have a bit of a discussion around, um, you know, all the different bits and pieces there. I will go and dig out actually where the, there's, there's a, there's a, I go uh, charity, Mission Python data uh, processing. There's a. I'm annoyed with myself that I. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. So that that's right. Actually, all the instructions there. I'm just annoyed with myself that I haven't got that link in the um, this. Uh, cool. Oh, well, great. I'm glad we were able to have a chat about about that. Um, ooh. All right. Um, well, uh, I maybe see you later on. If not, have a fantastic weekend. Yeah, no, unfortunately, I've um, got a busy afternoon, so it will be Monday now. Yeah, well, um, best of luck with getting all those. There's always, I've just got a load of oh, insurance and other things to go. Oh, gosh, there's always, I've got, there's always so much like uh, paperwork. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, but have a fantastic weekend and uh, I'll see you Monday. Yeah, yeah. No, that's my afternoon, actually, paperwork. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. Good seeing you, Brent. Bye for now. You too. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Bye. Bye.